So let's review exercise 14. And in this exercise, as the directions say, generate three logically equivalent statements for each of the following statements. Be sure your logically equivalent statements are in standard logical form. And so we note especially that you can use obversion for all types of statements and that you can use conversion with universal negatives and particular affirmatives only. You can use contraposition with universal affirmatives and particular negatives only. So it might be a good idea to go back and review the, the rules for uh, these translations into logical equivalents. You can check those out in the document notes on formal logic. And then note also, to get the third statement, you have to work on the obverted original. That is, once you obvert, you change the quality of the statement, and you can then do the remaining appropriate operation to that obverted statement, because any original two-term statement will only permit you to do two of the operations, obversion and either conversion or contraposition. But once you have done obversion, you've changed the quality of the statement, and then you can use the third operation um, and generate the third logically equivalent statement. So here are a couple of examples to get you started. These are already completed to show you as a model what you need to do on the exercise. So this first example is a universal affirmative statement, and because it's universal affirmative, we know we can contrapose and obvert. And then once we've obverted, we can also then convert the obversion to get the third logically equivalent statement. Um, and then the second example here is a particular affirmative, the original statement's particular affirmative, and we know that we can do conversion with particular affirmatives and also obversion. But then once we've obverted the statement, we can then contrapose the obversion to generate that third logically equivalent statement. So let's try this with the examples here, and we'll start with number one. Some yoga enthusiasts are not vegetarians. And as we look at this, we realize it's a particular negative statement, and when we have particular negatives, we know that we can contrapose and obvert the original. So let's start with obversion. I like starting with obversion only because I know I can do it with every kind of statement. So with obversion, we begin by changing the quality of the predicate term and then changing the quality of the whole statement. And that would give us some yoga enthusiasts are non-vegetarians. Right? So the predicate term here is non-vegetarians we've substituted the complementary term for the original predicate term, and then we've changed the quality of the whole statement, and that gives us the obversion. And then we can also contrapose the original, and with contraposition, we change the quality of both terms and then convert the statement. So we would end up with some non-vegetarians are because we're re, we retain the quality of the statement here are not uh, non yoga enthusiasts and then finally we now have um, after we've obverted we now have a statement we can convert because we have a particular affirmative so if we go back to the obverted statement here, we can convert that, which means just switching the, the place of the subject term and the predicate term, and we have some non-vegetarians are yoga enthusiasts. Okay, so number two. 
all temperamental chefs are untidy housekeepers. All temp uh, temperamental chefs are untidy housekeepers. And here, I think you recognize we have a universal affirmative statement, which means for the original, we can obvert and contrapose. So again, let's start with obversion, change the quality of the predicate term, then change the quality of the whole statement, which would give us no temperamental chefs are uh, non-untidy housekeepers. And if you just wanted to make it tidy, um, you could do that to eliminate the double negative. But the key thing is that you're substituting a complementary term for the original predicate term. So this becomes the first logical equivalent by a version. Then we can contrapose the original. And again, what we do there is change the quality of both terms and then convert the statement. We keep it as a universal and an affirmative, right? But it would become all non-untidy housekeepers are uh, non-temperamental chefs. And that's the contraposition. And then, um, of course, once you've obverted the original, so we go back to the obversion here, and we have a universal negative, and with universal negatives we can convert, so we convert the obversion to get the third, and we end up with no non-untidy housekeepers are temperamental chef. Number three. Some smartphone owners are not engaging conversationalists. Some smartphone owners are not engaging conversationalists. And so we start here with a particular negative statement. Some are not. And again, we can obvert and contrapose and then convert the obversion. The um, obversion would be, uh, again, change the quality of the predicate term, then change the quality of the whole statement. Some uh, smartphone owners are non, sorry, non-engaging conversationalists. The obversion um, then gives us a statement we can convert. So we've obverted the original, we end up with a particular affirmative, and then we can convert that. So the conversion of the obversion would be some non-engaging conversationalists are non, are, sorry, smartphone owners. And then finally, we can go back to the original and do contraposition because contraposition is possible with a particular negative. And so with contraposition, we're not changing the quality or the quantity of the statement, but we're changing the quality of each of the terms and then converting. So we would have some uh, non-engaging conversationalists are not non-smartphone owners. And that's the third logically equivalent statement. Number four, some constitutional principles are unavoidably controversial. Some constitutional principles are unavoidably controversial. So we have a particular affirmative here, and with particular affirmative we know we can obvert and convert, and then we can contrapose the obversion. So we'll start with conversion. That's an easy one to do, simply switching the position of the subject and the predicate term. Some uh, unavoidably controversial principles are 
constitutional principles. And then we can go back to the original and do obversion, change the quality of the predicate term, then change the quality of the whole statement, and we would end up with some constitutional principles are not non-unavoidably controversial. And then once we've done that obversion and made a particular negative, we can then contrapose the obversion, changing the quality of both terms and converting, but leaving it as a particular negative. So we would have some uh, unavoidably controversial uh, principles, we'll call them, are not non-constitutional principles. So just to be sure, in this one, see, we've, we've, um, gone, we've taken the original and then we've obverted it. And by obverting it, we end up with the complementary term. But then in contraposing, you once more have to change the quality of the term. So it goes back to the original, unavoidably controversial, right? But it's now in the different position of the subject term. Number five, no diploma recipients are credentialed agents. No diploma recipients are credentialed agents. Universal negative, and with universal negative, we can obvert and convert. So we'll do the conversion. That's the easy one. Uh, no credentialed agents are diploma recipients. And then we can obvert the original, changing the quality of the predicate term and changing the quality of the whole statement. All diploma recipients are non-credentialed agents. And then we can contrapose the obverted statement, which has now become a universal affirmative, so we can contrapose it. So we would have all credentialed agents are non-diploma recipients. Number six, some elegant poetry verses are unappreciated. So we have a particular affirmative. We can convert a particular affirmative. Um, conversion would be some um, under appreciated uh, lines, let's call them, are um, elegant poetry verses. And then we could have um, obversion of the original, change the quality of the predicate term, then change the quality of the whole statement. So we would have some elegant poetry verses are not appreciated, or you could say non-unappreciated. And then again, once you have the particular negative, you can obvert that statement, and that means changing the quality of both terms and then converting. So that would give us some um, unappreciated verses, or lines I think we used before, so we'll call it lines, some unappreciated lines, are not non-elegant poetry verses. Number seven, some non-students are not uninvited guests. Some non-students are not uninvited guests. Things are getting a little tricky here, but we have a, a particular negative. Some are not, um, but we're working here with mostly complementary terms. So we would begin, because it's a particular negative, we can begin with obversion, 
change the quality of the predicate term, change the quality of the whole statement. Some non-students are non-uninvited guests, or you could just say invited guests, and that would be okay. Um, and then you can convert the obversion which is simply to do uh, switching the position of the subject and predicate term of the adverted statement. So it would be some non-uninvited guests are non-students. And then we can do the third operation, and that is to go back to the original and contrapose which means we change the quality of both terms and then convert the statement. So with the contra, uh, contraposition, we would end up with some um, non-uninvited guests, or again, you could say invited guests, are not non-students, -non but it's much easier to just say students, right? So that's the third logically equivalent statement. Number eight, some undesirable elements are antisocial instigators. And in this case, we have a particular affirmative statement, some are. And with particular affirmatives, we know we can do obversion and conversion, and then we can contrapose the obversion. So we could do the conversion first. That would be the easiest one, simply switching the position of the subject and the predicate terms. Um, some antisocial instigators are undesirable elements. And then we could do obversion of the original statement. And we do obversion by changing the quality of the predicate term and then changing the quality of the whole statement. And that would give us some undesirable elements are not non-antisocial instigators. And then finally, now that we've got a particular negative, we can contrapose that particular negative to generate the third statement. And contraposing that particular negative means changing the quality of both terms and then converting. So we would have some antisocial instigators are not non-undesirable elements. And there we have our third logically equivalent statement. Number nine, Zdeno Chara is a very tall hockey player. Indeed, I think uh, Chara is still the tallest player at six foot ten ever to play in the National Hockey League. And remember also that when we start with an individual as the subject term, we're always going to get a universal statement. And in this case, it's a universal affirmative statement. And because it's universal affirmative, we know we can obvert the statement and contrapose it, the original. And then also we can convert the obversion. So let's do that obversion first. So we're starting with the universal affirmative. We have to change the quality of the predicate term and then change the quality of the whole statement so it becomes universal negative. No, Zdeno Chara um, are non-very tall hockey players. So that would be the ob version. Then you can convert that ob version. R remains as universal negative. No. Um, non-very tall uh, hockey, hockey players are Zdeno Chara. And then we can go back to the original and we can do contraposition, changing the quality of both terms and then converting. So we would end up with all non- 
very tall uh, hockey players are non Sedano Chara. And that's the third logically equivalent statement. Finally, number 10. Actor Colin Farrell is not related to Professor James Farrell. Perhaps in the distant past, many generations ago, we shared a common ancestor. I don't know about that, but in any case, as far as I know, we're not related. But remember, as we start with reference in the subject term to an individual, this makes it a universal statement. So even though the not is in the middle of the statement here, it is still a universal negative statement. So let's start, before we do the logical equivalence, let's start by translating this into standard logical form. No um, actor Colin Farrell are uh, relatives of Professor Farrell. All right, so that's our original statement. Now we have a particular negative, uh, sorry, universal negative statement, which we can then convert and obvert. So we'll do the conversion, no um, relatives of Professor Farrell are actor Colin Farrell. And then we can obvert the original. So we change the quality of the predicate term and then change the quality of the whole statement, which would become all um, actor Colin Farrell are non relatives of Professor Farrell. And then once we have a universal affirmative statement after obversion, we can then contrapose. We contrapose by changing the quality of both terms and then by converting the statement. So it would be all relatives of Professor Farrell are non-actor Colin Farrell. So there is exercise 14 on logical equivalence. Uh, continue to practice this skill. It's something you're going to need uh, going forward. You could even go to exercise 13 and take those two term statements that you made in translating from natural language and then produce logical equivalence for each one of those. Uh, but you can do it with any two term statement. Uh, master each of the three operations. Um, on the quiz, you're only going to need to do two, but you'll need to know all three operations so you can work on any kind of statement. And if you have a question on any of the items on exercise 14, please post them to the discussion board.